Um, I used to have a music book and at that time there was no DSTV so we would wake up it would start around about four-ish in the morning so we would wake up that early with our music book to um, listen to our favorite songs and I remember at the time um, I used to wait for Kajanin, Samborela, my son. There's only one Kelly Kumalo and there will never be one. So I'm visiting a good friend of mine and uh, today it's one of those exclusive invitations from Channel O. Sanmonani Lochani, hello. So me, myself and I, Vangeli Hardy, the trans queen, is having an interview today. I'm in Santin and right now it's off this one. For sure today I'm making it on time. <laughs> Ready, I'm leaving. Let's go see what television has for us today. Ooh, I'm getting up live. Right now it's gonna to one. I'm supposed to be there by two. Hopefully I make it on time. Hey sweetie. Good at you? Oh, you guys look amazing. Hey KB. amazing singer uh, she's been in the game for quite some time and today it's channel 0725 so briefly what is it so we are busy preparing for from a god to a king album release and we are shooting an acoustic of a couple of songs for the rollout and obviously um, a couple of songs that are going to be part of the album. Um, this will shock quite a lot of people. I was listening to years ago when I was giving birth to my son called Forever Young <laughs> and I used to listen to that song and I, I fell in love with Jay-Z during that time and there's a verse of his where he says I was born a god but downgraded to a king. So it kept playing in my mind. Only, I think last year, we I got to understand what he meant. And I was like, actually, I do understand this, especially having walked the spiritual journey and you get to understand the greater you are in the spirit as opposed to what you are in the flesh. And you understand that you are larger than life in the spirit, but you have to somehow um, not really suppress but minimize so that humanity can get to understand or speak the language that humanity understands. From your classic voice of Africa album, Mbini, Gatwalangai and Espamonini have been blowing up across different platforms two years since the album has been released. So what would this mean to you? Every time I go down the staircase in my house, it's like, whoa, whoa, okay. And then you get over it. It's an everyday beauty. It's not just about achievements of my hard work, but also seeing God's love through the, these achievements. It's like, whoa. It, it sort of propels one to want to go even further. You want to push yourself even more. And also you're always wondering if, am I, on the right path. A am I really taking it a notch higher or a couple of notches higher? Are you ever thinking you want to be a song that's going to reach gold and when it reached gold and you were told it reached gold, what was going through your mind before the actual outside reaction? 
I never release anything with an intention of golds and platinums and all of that. I release music with a goal to, you know, touch people's emotions and be able to, you know, somehow motivate in a particular area and also motivate myself. So it's, it's an icing on the cake when you get to achieve all these achievements and without even, you know, <laughs> wanting to achieve that. It's an icing on the cake, really. For me, it's about the interaction. I've learned that people appreciate visuals and we don't tend to give them more of visuals, so I've given them more since they have given me so much support with the past visuals. I mean, Mpini on 15 million and um, on five, Spambano on five, so it's a lot of, you know, streams in terms of visuals, so I wanted to just give more of that because people do, not people, but my people do appreciate it. So now I want to ask from the first album to now, to anything, your growth in terms of live performances, how would you rate it in a scale of one to ten? Um, I don't rate myself, I'm always great. That's what I believe. It's always about giving my best at all times. And I think with uh, my live performances, I think they've gotten even greater simply because I've gotten in touch with my spiritual self that allows me to connect with people spiritually. So it's all about connection. I think the growth is in terms of connection more than, you know, the runs, the notes and all of that. I still do great in all of that. But however, I think I've grown more in just connecting with the audience and with the people that buy the music and people that come to the shows. I'm not going to be one of those artists who would uh, decide, oh, I'm retiring. I will never do that. I am music and music is me. So I will do this until I cannot do it anymore. I see again. 25 years, I'd be old and raggedy and a grandma. I want to know the earliest memory of you watching Tunnel Oh, actually, I remember that quite clearly. And I remember at the time, I used to wait for Kajani, Samborela, my son. be so excited to see her and I'd be trying to write whatever language she's singing in so uh, they would play your Drew Hills, they would play your Tony Braxton's. It was definitely Kunisela and I remember <clears throat> I was with um, my record label at the time because we were told when it would play and it was the first time seeing my music video on TV so we were all waiting patiently for the song to come on. Channel O has literally been part of my entire career since day one. So it's been 18 years. First of all, they're turning 25 in my birthday month, so that's a big deal. No, but on a serious note, I'd like to say thank you for the support that you have given me as an artist or South African artist. Throughout the years, you have been part of my life for the past 18 years, and you've never failed me, not even once. And I'd like to say thank you and continue to support not just myself, but the rest of, you know, the talent out there.